Let's talk about grounding your Shapoko CNC machine. This isn't something everybody should do, but if you have either of the following issues, you should probably consider it. The first is dust and chip accumulation whilst cutting. This can happen in the dust extraction, or it can happen on the rails and the V-wheels causing movement problems with the machine. The second is random disconnects of the machine, particularly when cutting plastics or when the dust extraction is running. So what's the problem? There are a range of factors. Materials such as plastics, cutting in a low humidity environment, and the use of dust extraction can all build up static electricity on and around the machine. The simplest way to deal with this is to ground or earth the machine so that it can't develop a static charge. Carbide did a pretty good job with the power supply and the controller on the Shapoko. The power supply passes mains earth through to the zero volt of the controller, which is connected to the big heat sink on the back via the mounting bolts, and through that to the left Y rail. Notably though, the screen of the USB connection is isolated. We might think that this would ground the whole machine, but despite being mostly big lumps of metal, there's a couple of problems. First, the powder coating on steel parts is pretty solid, and it's an electrical insulator, so in many places, despite being bolted together, metal parts have no electrical connection. Secondly, the V-wheels the machine moves on are plastic, and this isolates parts from each other. What this means is that despite most of the base frame being grounded, the X-rail and Z-carriage are floating and able to collect static charge. Testing my machine, nothing on the X-rail or Z-carriage had ground continuity once I'd removed the spindle ground for testing. It's also worth checking that the right-hand Y-rail is grounded. The anodized surface of the aluminium is an insulator, so it's generally easiest to check the bolts threaded into the ends of the rails. Some of the polyurethane drive belts are anti-static and would provide a discharge path, but this is not true for all of them, and there are still places where the machine can be electrically isolated. So reviewing our machine, only the base chassis is grounded, with the two Y-rails connected to each other only through the powder-coated steel plate. Drawing out the key electrical parts of our machine, incoming AC power feeds the Shapoko power brick, your computer and the router installed in the machine. Utility earth is fed through the Shapoko power supply to the machine controller with zero volt, and this grounds the machine. The router is likely double insulated and doesn't have any ground connection. As we measured before, the USB connection has an isolator which disconnects it from the controller ground, and this reduces the risk of ground loop based interference or disconnects. If you've upgraded your router to a VFD driven spindle, things are a little bit different. Your spindle requires the case to have a good earth for safety, and you probably have a noise filter in line with your VFD, and then a screened cable from the VFD to the spindle carrying the three phase power and the ground connection to the motor. As the spindle is solidly clamped in the mount, as a side effect, this grounds the whole Z carriage for us as well. So we found our issues, what are we going to do to fix them? Firstly, we're not going to mess with the grounding or double insulation on the router or the spindle. That's there for safety reasons. Fixing the rest of the ground is pretty easy. We just need to supply ground to the X-axis, the Z carriage if you have the regular router, and the extract hose if you have an extraction boot with an anti-static hose attached. If you have the regular size Shapoko, instead of having the controller on the Y rail and the drag chains to route the cabling up to the X and Z axes, your controller is probably attached to the back of the X rail instead. This means that instead of the base and Y rails being grounded by the controller, it's the X axis that's grounded and the base and Y rails are floating. For the rest of this, I'll be referring to the XXL, so if you have the regular shape OCO, swap over the X and Y instructions for your machine. But what about the scary ground loop? Fortunately, ground loops aren't scary. We understand why they appear and how to avoid them in this case. We want to add ground connections to the Z carriage, the X axis rail, and the extraction hose. As we're just draining static charge away, we can use 1 mega ohm resistors in series with each connection. This mitigates the effect of any ground loops, even if things do get cross connected. You can either solder warm resistor into each ground wire, or use anti static plugs with built in 1 mega resistances. If you have the VFD driven spindle instead of the router, then you'll only need to ground the extraction hose and the X rail. The idea of star grounding is that we choose one common point as the ground for our system, and we individually route all the ground connections back to this point. As an example of how not to do it, here we've got the computer, the Shipoko, and the router on daisy-chained extension cords from one outlet, and we're taking our additional ground from another outlet. The Z carriage is grounded back to the Y rails, and the extract hose is daisy-chain grounded off the X rail. This is how you get ground loops and interference problems. To wire things up, we'll need some hookup wire, which we'll pull through the Y-Rail drag chain. 
These wires need to be long enough to go down to your earthing point, and one or two of them need to be long enough to go up through the other drag chain to the Z carriage. I'm using a fish wire here to pull it through the drag chain just to make things easier. I'm using simple crimp rings on the wires here because they're an easy, effective and fairly reliable way of bolting the wires down to get a good electrical contact. One option for the X-Rail ground is to use one of the nuts retaining the drag chain bracket. These are a good option because the bolts are threaded through the plate and therefore actually make quite a good electrical connection. Alternatively, if you have clips, brackets or anything else bolted directly into the X-Rail extrusion, you can use that as the ground connection. In this case, I'm using the additional brackets that I added to carry the additional drag chain. Once you have the X-Rail grounded, it's worth going back and checking the connectivity to both of the Y-Rail plates to make sure that the powder coat isn't insulating them. Feed the extraction hose ground wire through the X-Rail drag chain and up onto the Z carriage, then route it over the top and attach a connector onto the end. I've used a bullet connector, but the type of connector really doesn't matter. Use whatever's convenient. Attach the other connector part to the wire in your own static dust hose so that you can ground the hose when you attach it to the machine, but disconnect it when you want to remove it. As you'll probably spot here, the first crimp connector didn't grip very well on the steel wire, so for the second attempt I folded over the end of the steel wire to allow the crimp connector to grip more effectively, and that seems to have worked. Now take the other ends of those ground wires and attach them to your chosen ground point, the resistive plug, ground in your VFD switch box, whatever it is you've chosen to use. If you don't have the HDZ but you have the stock Z axis, then there's unfortunately a little bit more work that needs doing. Firstly, we have another set of isolating V-wheels between the sliding plate and the fixed plate. Fortunately, their attempt to sabotage us is thwarted by the springs which electrically conduct between the two plates. Unfortunately, the powder coat is also causing issues here. On my Z-axis, I found it was insulating one of the two aluminium rails that the router plate rides up and down on. Given that those are one of the worst places to have chips and dust sticking, you may need to scrape off some powder coat until you can get a clean connection. The carrier plate for the Z-limit switch, some other bolts and the belt pulleys were all also electrically isolated. Replacing one of the tension springs here restores the electrical connection between the fixed back plate and the sliding front plate. Unfortunately what it still doesn't fix is the connection through to the router bracket which would need more scraping. After spending some time testing, the least bad place I could find to ground the standard Z-axis was under the locking nut on one of the bolts the springs attached to. This is threaded into the plate and therefore has a reasonable connection, and as the springs form the electrical connection between the two parts of the Z-axis, it seems like a good location. Just loosen the nut, take the bolt out, and put the crimp ring underneath it. And with that completed, a little bit of continuity testing tells us that all of the key parts of the Z-axis now have a ground connection. So, now that we've done all our ground wiring, we need to test it. Using a multimeter with the Shapoko plugged in so that it has earth but not powered up, attach one side of the multimeter to ground. The crocodile clip of the bit zero works quite well for this, and work your way around the machine. Both of the wire rails and the VFD spindle, if you have one, should have close to zero ohms to ground. We expect those to have a very solid connection. The resistance to ground of the other parts of the machine is going to depend, obviously, on what value resistors you used in those ground connections. You should check the X-rail and both wire plates on the end of it, and also the anti-static hose. So, now we should be done. Our spindle should be grounded, our X-rail should be grounded, the main frame of our machine should be grounded, our extraction hose should be grounded, and there uh, shouldn't be anywhere we can build up static charge, cling on dust and create interference on our machine. Well, that's the theory. So I hope that was useful, and thanks very much for watching.